Hello there, Yusuf. All right, thanks for your work. That's super. I want them for taking action, writing these essays. That's fantastic. We love it when students are taking action like yourself. All right, first of all, it sees, uh, st st stands out <clears throat> in the first paragraph um, is that, let's see, there's no paragraphs here. We need like an introduction, main body paragraph, and then a summary. Okay? Um, so that's the first issue. The graph I'm writing about presents, no, that is way too personal. Okay? Uh, we don't want these personal pronouns, and we don't want that tense either. We want something like, um, the graph presents, or the graph shows global bird flu casualties per year from 1992, or from 1990, to 1997 okay or the range just put the range okay um also not only put the chronological range but also put sort of like the numerical range we can see on the axis the year and okay so usually what we teach is sort of like an overall sentence here and then we just give an overall view okay overall the amount of casualty casualties ranges from da 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 da, -da. Okay, one can see this is yeah. Okay, so we did kind of, we don't, we did kind of sort of like give an overview, <clears throat> not of the story, but of what's on the graph. Um, but we don't need y and x axis. Okay, we could just say, as I said before, just be more specific. Range starting in, in ninety-two, over five years, and reaching nineteen ninety-seven. And the number of casualties ranging from 3,000 to 5,000 or whatever it is. Okay, I'm observing this graph. Bird flu casualties have been on a steady incline, incline, decline, maybe incline. We wouldn't say that. They've been on a steady decline or a steady increase since 1999 at around 120 casualties. So just below a staggering 8,000 in 1997. Okay. Great vocabulary there. Um, okay, being on a steady increase, I guess. That's the word we wanted to use here then. Okay, however, since 1997, the number of birth casualties has plateaued just under 180,000 from 1997 and onwards to 2000. Okay, from the years the increase of birth has been quite significant um, from just under excellent vocabulary here and we're getting a really good picture of what's happening okay uh, well done for spotting sort of like some key features such as the increase at the beginning and the plateau so that's the correct amount of data we want to show here's another tip um try and include the minimums and the maximums as well because that's not only going to help you with your superlatives but these are also absolutely key features that we want to mention in our report okay going from just under da, 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 yep that's that is we don't use contractions okay i spotted that before don't use contractions that is four thousand more casualties compared to only five years from then okay good another structure you can use is respectively <coughs> with i don't know 140,000, 160,000. 190,000 for uh, 1992, 1993, and 1994, respectively. <clears throat> okay, I just made those numbers up, but that's a structure you probably want to, in to introduce, to use in your next work. <clears throat> Something interesting, that sounds way too, like, chatty. Yeah? We could just say, um, another noticeable data point is that during is that between the years 1990 and there wasn't much of a difference again that's like chatty it's a good data point okay so a notable data point is that uh, between 1990 and 1991 um, the numbers were steady uh, okay the numbers were steady as they were and the same also happened in 1992 and 1993 okay um, so again this kind of language you can see the exact same thing is spoken English which is different from the academic English we want to use in academic task 
one. 93 onwards, casualties started to increase. Okay, super. So great work. We are missing a few data points, like I said. Uh, the language, though, is the main issue here, and also paragraphs as well. The online course we have for Academic Task 1 can help you sort out all of that pretty quickly. It's quite straightforward. Next one. And it comes to answering this question. Again, spoken English, that's fine. Um, but I can immediately see a lot of personal pronouns, and I can see this is like a story. We don't give examples like that. Okay, and again, the structure, the paragraphing is so important. We should have the introduction, two body paragraphs, and then a conclusion. Okay, again, have a look at the online course, have a look at some sample essays. Okay, just to get a grip. And here's another tip actually you can consider just writing out essays. You know, find some essays online, write them out, pen and paper, and you'll find, you know, how what academic English is and how to structure your essays. Uh, a faster way, uh, have a look at our online courses um, and we can get you up to speed much quicker. When it comes to answering this question, I believe it fully comes down to personal preference. Okay, so I don't know what the topic is, uh, like from the examiner's point of view. I can, I can put this e sentence into an essay about crime, about, um, about education, about sports okay so make sure the sentence is topic relevant you know people who are close friends of mine that switch job to job on a regular switch from job to job and quite polar opposite jobs in fact okay chatty 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 okay in the spoken exam you're probably going to nail it but in the academic in the task two not that good a friend of mine who used to be a barber is now an electrician and he's told me the change in his, his, in his motivation and work ethic has been nothing but amazing for him all because of the new surrounding challenges he faces i can personally understand why it would be annoying for some people to do the same okay okay yeah that's not what we want that's not what we need okay um we introduce the topic with a topic sentence we kind of like indicate what we're going to talk about and then embody paragraph one we write it out with an example, reason, develop it. That's a cohesion and coherence score. Uh, you know, and then we do the same for body paragraph two, and then we give a conclusion. All right. Um, we got a set process for doing this from start to finish. It becomes incredibly easy, especially when you're getting feedback. Your improvement just keeps on going up. So, um, yeah, I definitely uh, have a look at the online course. On the other hand, in some jobs, that, and especially for someone like you, with not that many grammar mistakes, okay? For you, it's not a language um, problem. It's not language skills we need to develop. It's more essay skills, exam skills, which are much easier and much faster. On the other hand, in some jobs, there is a possibility of reaching the next position in your workplace, such as promotions or migrating to different places within the same company, comma, Essentially keeping the same job, but accepting different responsibilities and tasks. A great example of this is any corporate job or even doctors. Okay, again, it's a bit loose, you know, it's a bit chatty. Um, so if this was your essay, you could say develop this or even doctors. In the medical field, six out of ten doctors are known to have changed the country in the last ten years in Kenya. For something like that, yeah? As I was growing up, I, I saw how my father ranked up in the position. No, how my, fa how my father got promoted in the positions of his job, uh, of his job as a doctor, going from a senior housing officer to a well-known, well-known, respected consultant. Again, you can't give examples about your dad. You have to give, um, like you know, some statistics or maybe not even statistics, but a famous uh, a report. We go into this in a lot more detail in the online course. To summarize my answer, again, we don't want that. That's not academic. I don't think there's necessarily a correct answer. Ugh. It's all based on personal choices. Ugh. And also on the tasks of your job. <laughs> Sorry if I sound harsh, okay? But I want you to uh, um, really understand you know, what we're aiming for with academic English. Also, this, uh, don't do direct questions, um, which can lead to bother very quickly, in my opinion, and the question of should I change or do some jobs are challenging and bring some excitement to the expert. 
in the aspect of problem solving and developing. These types of jokes, again, this is kind of like a new idea where kind of considering in the final paragraph, final sentences, we don't want to be doing that. We just want to be consolidating, summarizing our argument, you know, um, summarizing the points we made in previous body paragraphs. Okay? So, and also we want to upgrade the vocabulary. Big was probably one of the first words you learned when you learned English. If you're going for a seven or above, you know, use better words, the significant problem to the individual, for example. Okay, um, so don't be demoralized uh, with this essay correction. I know I was battering you a little bit, um, but I'd rather uh, give you a rough time and make sure you improve than just praise you. Okay, so maybe have a look at the online course um, and we can just switch your essay corrections over to that course and you can start improving as soon as possible. Okay. All the best and good luck with your exam and keep the exam essays coming. Sorry this was a bit late. Uh, we just got a ton of essays at the moment. We're just getting through them. That's why I was jumping in. So great work. Let's keep on moving forward.